All right, everyone, we're getting ready to start the uh, first session of the second day of RacketCon. All right, uh, take it away, Sam. OK, great. Well, thanks, everyone, and welcome to day two of RacketCon. I have the honor of talking to everyone about the state of Racket in 2021. Uh, so if I was giving the real state of the union, I would say the state of Racket is strong. Uh, which I think is also true of Racket. Uh, Racket's doing great. Uh, we have a lot to celebrate in 2021. And that starts with uh, the release of Racket 8.0. So in the last year, we've released the next major version of Racket, which makes Shea Scheme the default uh, backend. That's been, I think, a huge success. Everything's working really smoothly. And we've successfully released on time 8.1, 8.2, and just yesterday, 8.3. So we should all be extremely pleased and proud with the work that went into this big improvement in the Racket ecosystem and the Racket uh, development possibilities and future. So let's all give ourselves uh, a big round of applause. Okay, uh, I think there's lots of possibilities that the creation of Racket on Shea opens up and we're just starting to scratch the surface of some of those as they develop. Um, so there's lots of cool things to do and we'll continue seeing the benefits of the development of Racket on Shea over many years to come in the future of Racket. So I'm going to break up uh, my talk the same way I did last year when I was giving the state of Racket. Uh, I'm gonna talk about code, I'm gonna talk about community, and I'm gonna talk about uh, things that are coming soon. Uh, and things that you can look forward to in the upcoming year or further future of Racket. So first, code. I think the big themes this year in the Racket development have been compatibility and consolidation. So just as an example, we spent a very large amount of time uh, since the last Racket Con making sure that absolutely everything we knew about worked on Racket CS prior to the release of Racket 8.0. That involved uh, looking at a huge number of different packages, building every single package uh, that's made available in the Racket community. Uh, you can see in this screen that there were 75 packages that we looked at that had problems. We fixed almost all of them. Um, and uh, there's just a few uh, remaining that uh, don't work on Racket CS for various fundamental reasons. Um, of course, those packages still work just fine on Racket BC. Uh, and uh, I noticed just this morning while I was taking a look at this issue that two of them have now been fixed um, since the last time I looked. So compatibility continues to improve. We continue to see basically everything in our community has made successfully the transition from Racket BC to Racket CS. Um, so that's uh, a really great sign of the strength and health of our community and of the success of Racket CS and Racket at building a backwards compatible uh, system and ecosystem. Another big improvement that we've spent a lot of time on is simplifying, making it easier to work with Racket. That involves things like an easier build process and uh, improved documentation for building and contributing to Racket. And that goes through everything from a new Shea scheme backend that uh, features portable bytecode uh, to make bootstrapping easier, uh, to 
an extensive build guide to new make file targets to rebuild the bootstrapping elements of Racket CS. Um, it's also been a focus on more platforms, particularly more platforms for Racket CS, uh, ranging from uh, Apple Silicon uh, to uh, older uh, platforms running BSDs that had various build problems. We've moved uh, and reorganized the Racket repo repository, moving some more packages into the main Racket repository to make development easier, as well as integrating the Racket fork of Shea scheme into the main Racket repository, all in the goal of making it easier to compile Racket, uh, develop Racket on new platforms, contribute to Racket, and generally making all the work that we're trying to do easier. There's been one big change in the implementation of the core of Racket, and that's a change coming out in Racket 8.3, released just yesterday. That change is that we've removed the arming and disarming system for syntax objects. Previously, when you tried to take apart a piece of syntax, uh, it might or might not be armed, which meant that you couldn't use some parts of the, that syntax in context outside of where it originally came from. The reason for this was to attempt to enforce some security properties where macros that were used defined in one context, in a trusted context, couldn't be used from untrusted code, for example, code in a sandbox, um, in order to circumvent the guarantees that the sandbox was trying to enforce. So for example, if the for macro expands to some unsafe code to go faster, that should, being able to use the for macro shouldn't grant you the power to use unsafe code anywhere in your program. Unfortunately, it turns out that there's a lot of holes to plug if you try to make this work. And while we've spent many years trying to make this work, it's become clear that this is a losing game to play. And so we've moved to a simpler system that simply is somewhat more restrictive um, about macros, but does not have the need to constantly try to make workarounds uh, to make the arming and disarming system more secure. Uh, so uh, Matthew wrote a long email describing the details of this change, but hopefully the new system will be both simpler and more secure for people to use. Another aspect of making things easier to run and to build is the new Reiko Cross package. Reiko Cross is a new tool for installing and running variants of Racket. Now that can mean something as easy as running an old version of Racket easily with one line on any program you want, but it can also mean building uh, cross compilers, compiling uh, programs that you have for other machines, for other architectures, uh, and uh, just a general way of managing cross compilation uh, and tooling that handles downloading, building, installing, and everything that you might want for you. I think as this tool continues to gain features and be more widely used, it's going to be even easier to build portable Racket applications for whatever platform that you want to build and to test uh, and run your Racket program on a wide variety of platforms uh, and for Racket versions. Of course, one thing that I wanted to check was last year I showed the major reduction in C code that we've 
uh, accomplished by switching to Racket CS, and that number continues to go down, if only by six fewer, uh, oh, 106 fewer lines uh, this year than last year. So we're continuing to move code out of C and into Racket and continuing to improve the system while writing less and less C code, uh, everyone's goal. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the Racket community and how the Racket, things that have uh, changed in the Racket community over the last year. The biggest one that I think is uh, important is the growth of the Racket Discord. So if you haven't joined Discord, it's extremely active. There's tons of people talking about everything from uh, the latest development in the uh, internals to how to uh, write beginner Racket programs to showing off uh, their latest applications. Uh, it's a really fun place to hang out. Uh, there's way more messages than I can follow every day. And uh, it's a really exciting place to chat. So uh, in case you don't have enough messaging solutions in your life, uh, join the Racket Discord, uh, check it out, and hear about all the things that people are talking about, about Racket. Been more competitions, uh, people building quick scripts, the syntax parse B uh, this year. We've had lots of people demonstrating the power of Racket on everything from games to macros to uh, automation scripts. Uh, this has been a fun part of the Racket community for the last several years. And it's really cool to see that continue, see new people uh, like Ben Greenman creating new competitions uh, and showing off the power of Racket uh, in a fun way. And we heard some about that in Ben's talk uh, yesterday. Uh, we continue to increase the amount of contributions to Racket. We had even more pull requests merged across the Racket organization uh, in 2021 than in 2020. Um, we had significantly more issues closed. A big part of that, the credit goes to Matthew, who went on a streak of uh, fixing small bugs and closing old uh, issues uh, in the Racket repository. But the development velocity in Racket continues to be strong and continues to increase. Uh, we're continuing to have uh, strong numbers of contributions, um, slightly fewer this year than last year. Uh, I think uh, last year was an unusual year because of the uh, merge of the Shea scheme uh, branch. Uh, as you can see, when we count new contributions, so we added all the contributions from uh, Shea scheme last year. Um, this year, we have slightly fewer new contributors, uh, which is unfortunate. We need to continue working on bringing new people into the Racket community, but we've had lots of contributions in the form of uh, talks, projects, uh, exciting applications, and other contributions. Many people are contributing to the Racket project, not just in the Racket Racket repository. Um, The third part of this talk is to talk about exciting new stuff that's coming soon. First thing I want to mention is yet another new way to talk about Racket. Uh, as, uh, as hard as it is for uh, me and other people who've been on the internet for much too long, mailing lists are no longer the most popular way to discuss things on the internet. And we've decided to create an additional forum using the discourse uh, software. So you can, in fact, go to racket.discourse.group and check that out. Uh, and uh, we're going to continue using that as uh, a way to asynchronously discuss Racket. Um, 
Discourse is a system that works well over email in addition to reading it on the web. So if you're the sort of person who funnels everything through your email inbox, uh, Discourse will work well for you as well. Um, so this is a new uh, and exciting way to talk about Racket. Uh, this is, I think, a theme, finding new places and ways to discuss Racket with our friends, with our colleagues, and with the rest of the Racket community is an important part of uh, broadening our community. Another exciting thing that's coming soon is a new expression editor uh, for Racket at the terminal. So based on the Shea scheme uh, REPL, uh, Matthews built the exp editor package that uh, does things like syntax highlighting that you can see here, parenthesis matching, um, proper indentation dependent on the language that you're using, and many other features. Uh, so there's lots of cool stuff uh, there, and there's lots of possibility for improving things further, um, whether that's uh, plugging into tab completion uh, or whether that's improving the editing experience um, or uh, doing more things. Uh, I think this is going to make the Racket redevelop print loop experience even nicer than it has been. So last year, I told you that transient type Racket was going to show up in the next year. Uh, this year, I'm telling you that again, but uh, Ben Greenman's been doing really great stuff it's really close to being done. And I'm confident that uh, next year we're going to have uh, different ways of enforcing types at the boundary and type bracket with different performance trade offs, including allowing you just not to check those types the way TypeScript does or to check types in a shallow way following the transient approach to gradual typing that can really reduce a lot of the runtime overhead of using type bracket. Another exciting feature of type bracket that's coming is an actual kind system. Uh, so this is one of the uh, worst decisions that I made when developing type bracket is to not do this. And uh, Fred Fu uh, has been working really hard and built a new system that uh, fixes all these problems uh, in a nice way that uh, avoids breaking existing code as well. So those are two big changes to how people are going to work with type bracket. Um, and I think it's going to continue to make type bracket a better place to develop uh, your favorite new racket project. And the other big thing that's coming uh, even more so in uh, the next year than in the past year, but has had a lot of momentum in the last year as well is Rhombus. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much about this because there's two talks about this uh, and uh, some discussion later this afternoon. But uh, last year we were looking at lots of ideas. Uh, people were writing lots of uh, issues and pull requests describing the design space. Uh, now there's an actual prototype that you can try out and people are writing example programs. So Sam Phillips has been doing a great job writing a bunch of programs to try out uh, how Rhombus works and the new shrubbery syntax that's been developed for that. Um, so you can actually see uh, how things work out. I think there's a lot of great stuff there. I'm really excited. And I'm looking forward to hearing Matthew talk more about that uh, later this afternoon. So that's a short summary of what's exciting and what's happened in uh, Racket in 2021. Uh, I think the state of Racket is strong and I'm looking forward to what 2022 is going to bring. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Um, now, there are uh, a few questions that we'll get started with right away. <laughs> Lots of people are clapping for you on, um, on Gather, by the way. 
Um, so uh, the first question is about the discourse forum that you've uh, mentioned, and we've sent out uh, links to that on Gather and uh, to the existing mailing list. And so someone asked the question, um, adding discourse to the already fragmented landscape of IRC, mailing list, Slack, Discord, etc. Is this a good idea? Are we not getting too fragmented? Doesn't it make more sense to have most users in one place? So I think there's definitely drawbacks to fragmentation. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, a recognition of that in the fact that there's only one discourse forum here. Uh, we have two mailing lists, uh, Racket Dev and Racket Users. Uh, I think given the volume of discussion, we don't need multiple groups and it's often hard for people to figure out which mailing list to post to. So we're going to only one. My personal hope is that we can move away from existing from the mailing lists towards discourse, but that requires community buy-in and uh, community adoption. If everyone hates discourse, then we're not going to get rid of mailing lists. But if we can uh, effectively uh, consolidate there, then we can in fact reduce the number of forums that um, everyone is using. Um, I feel like I know what I would say about this, Sam, but could you talk a little bit about like why we chose discourse and like how we recognize that this was something that we needed to take a move on in the first place? Yeah, so you would take been... a little bit where you said that, you know, we're old farts who like mailing lists, but dot, dot, dot. Yeah, so one, one reason to do this is that like anyone, who's been on the Racket mailing list for a while, I've noticed that there's less mailing list traffic than there used to be. And uh, if you're on other mailing lists, you'll notice that that's a trend there too. Mailing lists are just not as popular and they don't provide the features that people are looking for. One particular feature that uh, our mailing list hosting uh, does not provide that Discourse can do a better job of is uh, spam protection and people who are on the racket mailing lists will have noticed that we have uh, had some serious spam problems um, uh, in particular in Italian. Um, and so that's another reason uh, to move in that direction. Um, so then there's the question of why would we choose discourse? Um, I think there's a couple reasons. So one other thing that we talked about was uh, GitHub discussions, um, which uh, Matthew actually set up for Rhombus discussion and I think has worked pretty well there. Um, but that doesn't provide one central point of discussion uh, and it doesn't work as well via email, I think. And the other thing we've seen is that lots of other communities have successfully adopted discourse, uh, in particular other language communities, uh, ranging from Rust to Haskell to OCaml. Um, and that's worked out well in those cases. And so uh, we're happy not to try to innovate in the programming languages discussion technology space. Uh, and uh, to adopt best practices that other people have uh, already figured out. Yeah, and in your answer there, you kind of answered someone's question about the spam problem on the mailing list. And um, my understanding of this is that basically there's not much we can do given how we're hosting. Yeah, so the mailing list spam problem is extremely unfortunate. Uh, Google Groups does not provide any tools other than banning individual users. Uh, or doing full-scale moderation. Yeah, or we could change the whole list to be moderated, uh, which I think would not be the right thing for Racket. Yeah. Um, 
Now, uh, someone asked the question, um, last time I checked Discord, the moderators seem to be very opinionated about what topic is allowed to be discussed. Does that continue to be the case? Um, uh, I think that I could, should answer this question. Sure. Um, so I'm the, like, the official owner of the Racket uh, Discord on the Racket management team side. And um, we have a team of moderators for um, the Racket Discord. And there have been a few times where we've had to you know, discuss as a group of moderators um, what the rules of conversation are um, and what the rules of order that the moderators are empowered to enforce. And if you feel like that, um, if you feel like there's any problem with the moderation team, um, please contact the Racket um, management team and me specifically, and I can address those issues. There was kind of a controversial uh, thing that happened last year, but I think that we dealt with that pretty well. And I think that the moderators on the Discord community um, did a great job sort of reflecting with one another um, about what's the right way to run things uh, going forward. So um, it's definitely a learning experience and we hope that it's going to be a good place for everybody to have whatever the right kind of conversations they want to have are. Anyone else want to add anything about that on, the, on our side? Uh, I'll just say that there's uh, a lot of discussions about all sorts of different things these days on the Racket Discord. So while I'm happy not to have any involvement with uh, moderation uh, and uh, not to have to worry about that. Uh, I'm, I think the moderation team is doing a good job. One kind of FYI thing that's relevant to think about a lot is, is that the, the moderation has to worry about on Discord is that Discord is far more popular among students than mailing lists. Um, so, you know, occasionally we get people asking questions on the mailing lists and we have in the past about like doing homework problems. But this is a much, much bigger deal on Discord where it happens a lot, including like, you know, people asking to, you know, hire people and like pay them and stuff to do their homework. And so that's just kind of an example of the kinds of issues that show up um, in the Discord community that are kind of unique. So um, those are the three questions that we've got so far. Um, Maybe we should just transition to our town hall and I'll uh, stop screen sharing here.